The West is in crisis. More than 50% of the region is now under what's classified as exceptional drought, the highest emergency tier possible. In California, it's even more dire. Nearly the entire state is experiencing... According to the U.S. Drought Monitor, 50% of the western U.S. is experiencing extreme drought conditions. In California, that number soars to 74%. You know, the whole western United States has been under a fairly severe drought for a couple of decades now. So it's not just a California issue, it's uh, the whole southwestern U.S. Currently, we're facing the largest drought in the last 1,200 years. Water is always an issue in California. Droughts are cyclical. It's not, are we facing a drought? It's it's when it, are we going to be facing our next drought. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. From our oceans to groundwater to lakes and rivers. The problem is 97% is saturated with salt. And only 0.5% is accessible to us. Desalination is the process of removing salt from seawater. So with the West being under a severe drought for decades, can desalination be the answer to solving the water crisis? So this water people were surfing in this morning, right? Yes. To find the answer, I had to go directly to the source itself. The seawater desalination plant in Carlsbad, California has been producing 50 million gallons of water a day for San Diego County since 2015. In that time, we've produced almost 89 billion gallons of fresh drinking water to serve 400,000 San Diego County residents. To produce that much in just over seven years, the plan has to take in 100 million gallons of seawater a day. We turn half of that water into high quality fresh drinking water. The other half of that water goes back out to the ocean with double the salt content or brine. Brine is a high concentrated solution of salt that is left over. In, in most cases have a very concentrated uh, brine, uh, it's very concentrated salt solution that you're gonna have to dispose of. The problem is it can have a threatening impact on the marine ecosystem if not disposed of correctly. Marine life is adapted to a certain amount of salinity. So if all of a sudden, especially in a more, you know, near the coastal area, you would dramatically increase the salinity from this waste, it would, you know, offset um, that, that ecosystem waste. So you go from having a, you know, like a water quality problem to a, a solid waste or hazardous waste problem. There has been a growing number of protests throughout the years against desal along the Pacific coastline. The brine, waste, and marine life are a few issues brought to light by activists. Laws have been put in place to help protect the marine life, but is it enough? California Ocean Plan Amendment requires that the through velocity coming into the plant through those screens, and the screens have to be one millimeter thick, so it's like a thickness of a penny. And, and, and the velocity at which it approaches that those screen has to be half a foot per second. The protective screen and limiting the intake flow are to prevent any marine life from entering the plant. The goal is to minimize the mortality of all forms of marine life. To help with the local marine ecosystem, Poseidon is doing mitigation projects. So for example, Carlsbad, we are building 125 acres of new wetlands in South San Diego Bay. Yes, so my title is Technical and Compliance Manager. So where are we uh, walking to? Yes, so we are now walking into our RO building, which is really the heart of desal. Um, what you'll end up seeing here in just a few seconds is about just around 16,000 um, reverse osmosis membranes hard at work to create 50 million gallons of drinking water each day. The white vessels that you see are, those are each holding eight uh, reverse osmosis membranes. And then the blue hoses that are attached to them, that is capturing that high quality drinking water. How long does it take for water to come from out there into here? Into here, it's actually just about an hour. The water in this room right now is from the morning surf. The whole process from the time the water enters the plant to leaving the walls purified is just two hours. So why aren't these plants up and down the Pacific coastline? 
Uh, the challenge with that is that desalinization as a process is highly energy intensive and is also quite expensive. And you'll look at the cost to produce a certain volume of water. As you can imagine, the process isn't easy nor cheap, but neither is importing water. And when we think about how much energy it takes to deliver water, local, high quality water, we need to remember when we import water into the county, we're also using an extreme amount of energy. That water has to tra travel thousands of miles and over mountains to get to us here in San Diego County. And so um, we are offsetting that by pr producing our own water locally. Currently, Poseidon is hoping to build another plant just over 50 miles up the shoreline in Huntington Beach. At the time of this story, they're in the final stages of the permitting process. So, with energy being a big issue for these plants, is renewable energy an option? And that certainly could be part of the mix. I mean, the power has to come from some resource, most likely you know, an electrical power source. Um, and I think more and more as both California, but the larger country shifts to greater content of renewable sources that we will see those opportunities present themselves. You know, so, but that's where it's a little tricky, right? Because there's, you know, policymakers making energy decisions. There's policymakers making water decisions. Some of those are connected. Some of those aren't. Um, so I think it's a matter of whether those conversations are going in the same direction or whether those groups are, are not talking. Poseidon has already been making that switch towards reusing its own energy. Here in Carlsbad, we have energy recovery devices hard at work. And those energy recovery devices are recovering 50% of the energy, energy use in the plant. That's equivalent to taking 9,000 passenger vehicles off the road each day. And we also are looking to solar panels on the roof. Our Huntington Beach plant is looking to operate with 100% renewables. At first glance, it seemed that desalination was just for the coastal communities. But as I discovered, the impact goes much further inland, freeing up water resources for other communities and even states. Yes, we will supply water to the coastal communities, but then it would also help the communities that are inland the community, not even in California, it'll help Nevada, it'll help, help Arizona because everybody's on the Colorado River aqueduct. Desalination would be used at the coast, say in Mexico for their water supply so that Arizona could take more out of the, the Colorado, Colorado River, for example. Back at the plant in Carlsbad, I got a better picture of what the whole process entails from the seawater intake. This is the first place on, in the plant that we actually see the seawater um, pop up here, they're in our pipeline. And the simple materials used inside the filter beds. Well-known uh, media combination here. Very similar, if not the same, media combination is used throughout pretty much all water treatment plants. Anthracite, sand, and gravel. To the final process, two hours after the water first entered the plant, the taste test. It's good, it's good stuff. It's just so good, like it's, it's smooth. It's smooth, it's soft. And that's, that's really, that's desal, it's RO water right here. Desal has been around for years across the world. So to say it's the single answer to solving the water crisis in California, may be a stretch, but it's definitely an important part of our water portfolio, giving us another option to turn to. Well, th there's no cheap and easy way to get more water, for sure. So don't think of desalinization as, as sort of the magic tool for us. It can be an important part of our mix, but it's always going to be a very energy intensive part of that mix. There's no way to separate that. I mean, so, so I, and I don't want it to come across that I'm at, against desalination, right? I mean, it's a, it's a very effective technology. It's, it should be part of the options being considered, but, but I think the, the energy piece really needs to be taken into consideration and the waste disposal piece. Hey everyone, Cody Broadway here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out the NBCLX YouTube channel. Be sure to click here for more videos and also click here to subscribe to join the NBCLX community.